For him, Viking News at 5. A local frozen body found dead in a cranberry bra bog reservoir. What are the new developments? The Woof Sox to start their 2021 season. <laughs> They're to start their season at a new stadium in hopes to cancel MCAS for students this year and in future years. Brings a large group of teachers together. What are they planning? Find out everything about this and more coming up at 5 o'clock. Live from the WCTV studios in Wareham, this is Wareham Viking News. Wareham Viking News at 5 starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Wareham Viking News. Thank you for being with us today on our live news show. And yes, we are back! Fully live and fully in studio. I'm your host, Emma R. Caro, and remember to join us Wednesdays at 5 p.m., Thursdays at 9 a.m., or on YouTube later tonight for our news broadcasts. Before we start our show tonight, we'd like to give a special thank you to our viewers for your continued support. Even though we went fully virtual for a while, we are happy to be back here in the studio and thankful for your support. With that, let's get right into this week's news. A body was recently discovered in a frozen over bog reservoir on February, on February 21st. The body seems to have been that of a middle-aged man who decided to take a swim in the frozen over bog at about 4.30 p.m. on February 21st after making a hole in the ice. And when he did not resurface, two friends alerted authorities. His body was recovered at about 12.30 p.m. on February 22nd by the Wareham Fire Department and the Plymouth County Technical Rescue Team. The man's name has not been released, but the next of kin have been notica notified. <laughs> Apparently, the weather conditions as of late made the search for the man extremely difficult, as the reservoir is about an acre and a half of murky water. There were searches made by dive teams and with sonar until about 11 p.m. that night, returning early on February 22nd to continue their search. No ice is safe ice, assistant chief of the department of William pa Patrick Haskell stated. If you really feel the need to go on the ice to go skating or whatever, go to your local rink. Wareham's Board of Selectmen has shown opposition to Governor Baker's new vaccination plan. They have recently penned a letter that expressed concerns with the new plan, which directs vaccines to the mass vaccination sites instead of supplying to community health care clinics like South Coast. In their letter, they express how it is unpractical for Wareham residents to drive to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, which is 40 miles away, when they were able to administer vaccines successfully at the local YMCA. It also addresses a new plan to open a state-run faculty in North Dartmouth at the end of the month, which is still more than 20 miles away from Wareham. The letter expresses concerns about the Foxborough Vaccination Center, claiming that multiple seniors who have traveled there noted how understaffed it was, and that some had to wait as long as two hours to schedule an appointment for their second dose. We understand that the pandemic has been challenging to your administration and that there are no easy answers, the letter reads. However, these recent decisions are hasty, confusing, and they have made it more difficult for our residents to obtain this life-saving resource accordingly. We respectfully ask that you reverse these decisions and once again allow our local healthcare system to handle vaccine distribution and efficiently and conveniently, as it had been doing before the change. The decision to cancel MCAS last year came at no surprise to anyone since the state was not able to offer in-person learning to its students due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But now that in-person learning has started back up again, although part-time, how will MCAS be handled this year? More and more people have questioned this at the time gets closer and closer. In fact, a group of Massachusetts teachers is planning to meet tomorrow to discuss the campaign to cancel MCAS this year for students. The original plan was for MCAS this year to force it to resume in 2021, with high school juniors taking the math test in January, the ELA test in May. However, this changed due to the much opposition from teachers. They called for allowing this year's seniors to skip the MCAS test and for grades 3 through 8 to instead be tested by a sampling method that does not force students to take every portion of the test. Although this is a step in the right direction, the Massachusetts Teachers Association would like to see the state outright cancel the MCAS test, not only for this year's seniors, but in future years. 
We are so energized to see so many people showing interest in the Cancel the MCAS campaign, the Massachusetts Teachers Association invite reads. By joining forces across the state, we will move this campaign from a hashtag to a movement. The Deca School could be put to good use soon as a new plan was proposed this February 16th Board of Selectmen meeting. As the new elementary school was built, more minor elementary was opening in January 2022, Degas will be left vacant. Ownership of the building will be turned over to the town instead of the school district. This new plan would make use of the former Deca school building as a place for office and lab space, helping our town significantly. A new 170,000 square foot lab space of this capacity would generate an estimated of $219,000 in annual tax revenue for Wareham, as well as offer about 270 more jobs. This presentation was done by Grant King, the Director of Comprehensive Planning for the Southeast Regional Planning and Economic Development District, proposing that the area be re rezoned and turned into a flex zone. Other possibilities for the space were considered like a senior housing center, a multiple facility or a commuter rail station. This is just a great economic development opportunity, Selectman, Selectman Patrick Torpiano said at the meeting. I can't see letting it fall through the cracks. Now it's time for us to take a short commercial break, so go get yourself some refreshments and make yourself comfortable. Don't go away though, you won't want to miss our next story. Up next, the old train station is beautified and proposed to be put to use by businesses. The Woosox get to start their 2021 season. The old Onset Police Station goes on the market. All this and more, just after the break. Welcome back everyone to your local Wareham Viking News at 5. I'm your host, Emma R. Caro, and thank you for joining us tonight. We have more local stories to share with you, so let's jump right into it. The old train station on Merchant's Way has had a completely recent makeover, being decked out in tables, chairs, new security, lighting, and security gates, and now businesses can apply to use it. The view of the river and the comforting atmosphere makes this an ideal space for outdoor dining. Businesses can now send in their proposals to use the space, who would also be responsible for maintaining the area while they use it. Users could pay for bathroom cleanings, garbage disposal, and closing if they are up to choose to do so. Preferences for proposals will be given to local businesses. We are looking to schedule people in the space for serving, entertaining, and arranging space for their events and food service. Reads the request for proposals. Any and all ideas are welcome. The alleyway next to the El Mariachi is also completely open and available for use, although the town would like to keep that alleyway clear for a walkway to the waterfront. Anyone interested should go to the Request for Proposals page of the town website at the proposals will be accepted on a rolling basis. The Worcester Red Sox will begin their season soon at their new stadium, Polar Park. The baseball team, the Woo Sox, is set to begin their upcoming 2021 season on April 6th at Scranton. The season opener will be Tuesday, April 13th against Lee Valley, meaning we will have much to tell you in the coming months in the world of sports and local baseball. With this being their first game in almost 600 days since the pandemic, I am sure that not only are they excited to get back into the field, but we are all excited to watch them. Go Woo Sox! Well, the building that was formerly used as a summer police station in Onset will be going on the market soon. Onset Fire District has decided to put the empty building up for sale, a building that hasn't been used in several years. Discussed at the February 11th Prudential Committee meeting, Plymouth County Commissioner Frank Balzer discussed the sale of the property where it was voted unanimously to begin the selling process. The building has about 1,300 square feet of space and is valued at $212,600. Balzer said that the sale will likely take about 40 hours of work over the span of three months, costing the town about $2,000. The building did go on the market once before in 2016. However, <laughs> it did not receive letters of interest. Well, for our next segment, every month the high school recognizes a group of students selected for displaying the positive Viking traits. Here is this week's Viking Ship Award Show.
Okay, we're here for the Viking Awards for the month of January, and we have many of our recipients are going to be receiving two certificates. So we'll get started with our first one. For scholarship and citizenship, Hot Mutt Andrade, class of 2025. For scholarship, Matthew Ansel, class of 2025. For scholarship and citizenship, Sheridan Bancroft, class of 2022. For scholarship, Haley Ducharme, class of 2025. For craftsmanship, Zachary Messina, class of 2022. For scholarship, Daniel McGrath, class of 2024. For scholarship, Michaela Moore, class of 2024. For scholarship, twice, Muskin Patel, class of 2025. For scholarship, Ethan Petito, class of 2025. For citizenship and sportsmanship, Emma Sylvia, class of 2025. Our student of the month for the month of January is Sheridan Bancroft, and our Scotty Award goes to Hot Mutt Andrade. Congratulations to all the recipients for the January Viking Awards. Well, folks, it is unfortunately time for us to go now. You won't want to go away, though. We have some exciting things coming up next. New changes were made to the town crash plan that you could apply to. And our favorite weather girl, Isabella, will help us plan for the next week. All this and more after the break. Welcome to the morning show. 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 Welcome to the new morning show. Massachusetts are asking what they can do to help stop the spread of the virus. Our response? Answer the call. Hello? Thanks for calling. I've been worried. Thanks. Now I know what to do. Through what's called contact tracing, the MA COVID team will be reaching out to everyone who's tested positive for coronavirus or who has been exposed. <laughs> Look out for area codes 833 or 857 and answer the call to keep your community safe. Visit mass.gov slash MA tracing team. Good evening and welcome back to Wareham Viking News, your favorite thing to watch on a Wednesday night. I'm your host, Emma R. Carroll, and thank you for choosing to stick with us. We have more to share, so let's not keep you waiting any longer. The Board of Selectmen recently held a meeting on February 16th, approving a few important changes to the town trash plan. These changes include a senior discount for low-income seniors and an opt-out form for those who would rather dispose of their trash another way. 
Senior citizens with low income can now reduce their curbside costs from $365 to $245, or they can get a sticker for the transfer station for $62.50 instead of $125. To apply, a senior citizen must show proof of fixed income that is lower than $33,320 for a single person, or $38,080 for a couple. Selectman also suggested multiple ways that residents can reduce their cost at the transfer station by reducing the amount of waste they use by composting or recycling. The opt-out program that was also approved at the meeting will allow residents to apply to opt out of the town trash plan to dispose of their trash by other means. This includes people who can dispose at their jobs, personal businesses, or in other ways. There is an application process that asks residents for an explanation of how they will dispose of their trash and documentation that can prove this. Discounts for seasonal residents were discussed at the meeting, but were not approved yet. Well, that New England winter weather has really been a doozy, this past week especially. I think it's time for our new weather girl, Isabella, to tell us how this week is going to go. Bella, what's the weather looking like? Hey, Emma, it's Isabella. And this is your Viking weather report. Today will be sunny with highs of 49 and lows of 29. Tomorrow will be rainy, highs of 48 and lows of 36. Sunday will have nightly showers, highs of 49 and lows of 38. And now for your weekly, your Viking trivia. Which U.S. president was offered to play in the NFL? Is it A, Jackson, B, Trump, C, Clinton, or D, Ford? Tom Brady, Vladimir Putin. And the answer is D, Ford. Now back to you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you, Bella. So hello, everyone, and welcome back to your beloved word of the week. You've heard us talk about the different tarot card arcana, but what does arcana actually mean? In honor of the release of the game Persona 5 Strikers in this past week, the Persona series being full of relationships based around the tarot card arcana, this week's word of the week is arcana. Usually used in its plural form of the word, that being arcana, arcana means mysterious or specialized in knowledge, language, or information that is only accessible by the initiate. While it's time for us to take a short break, you won't want to go anywhere. Up next, we have the latest information on the Buzzards Bay Coalition and our weekly sports report. All this and more, and we come back. Hello? Yeah, I can come in. No, I was, I was, I was awake. Mm-hmm. Cool. Hey, do you have Viking Pride? Of course I have Viking Pride. Viking Pride? 
know I have that. Of course I do. My <laughs> Gotta believe. Go away. Go Vikings, bro. Viking pride. Who doesn't have Viking pride? It's all good. Yes. Vikings! No Vikings! Fair enough. Nobody better than a Viking. Viking pride! No Vikings! No Vikings. Viking pride! You have it? Hello everyone and welcome back to Where I Have Viking News. I am your host Emma R. Caro and I am very happy that you've decided to join us tonight. We have more to share so let's get into it. Many of us have seen a new building at Onset Beach, the Onset Base Center at the Buzzards Bay Coalition. We know lots of people have had questions, so our producer Indiana Troop sat down with Kat Gura de Foley, the director of the Onset Bay Center, to answer some of those questions. This is just a clip from the interview, and the full interview with Indiana and Kat can be found at www.wherehamvikingnews.com or on our Facebook page. Awesome. So, and then I want to ask you kind of one hard hitting question. So it's going to be a tough one. I'm sorry in advance. Um, <laughs> but it, so obviously um, in the building of this bathhouse and there was a lot of concerns in the community about certain things and different things. So my big question is for someone that's just going to the beach and going to onset and say it's even a tourist coming to the beach. How will this, uh, how will all of this affect their um, stay and onset or someone's trip to the beach, if in any way? That's a really great question. I find that the fact that we're offering these programs really enhances not just a, a visitor's stay, but everybody. Um, we're, we're providing these opportunities for people to get out on the water and have lasting connections. And it is going to be a very busy bathhouse because it is a very special place and a lot of people love Onset Beach and I know that we're very cognizant of the fact that this is a beach that people visit and and it's about having um, mutual respect for making sure that we aren't being super obtrusive. Um, and that's why we have very well laid out the, the different programs. So having staggered start times and um, having um, temporary lanes that we have to set up from the doors to the water and taking them down as soon as we can so that we're not taking up a, a big portion of the beach. It's just about com being communicative and, um, you know, making sure that people know that what we're actually providing is a, is a pretty awesome community service and that we are hoping that they'll want to participate with us. That's awesome. Awesome. Because, I, I mean, there's not <laughs> there's not many things like this at other beaches I've been to. So, like, it's a great, it's a very unique um, experience to Onset Beach. So, that's really great. Thanks. It's, Any, it's It just adds to the charm that is Onset, you know. Mm -hmm. And there are so many instances where residents of Wareham don't actually have a whole lot of access to the beach. And we want to break that barrier. We want them to feel comfortable coming down. We want them to feel empowered out on the water. And we don't want them to miss out on the amazing things that you can experience out there. Awesome. And anything else, anything else you want to throw in there? What can someone watching this um, right now do to help you to contribute? What's the call to action here from you? Yeah, a couple things. So, you know, taking the five minutes to complete the community survey, you can access it at the onsetbaycenter.org website and then click on community survey link. I really value your feedback and it'll help us develop programs for seasons to come. Um, I would say if you're interested in volunteering, I'll have plenty of volunteering opportunities available. And so you can always reach me at 508. 999-6363 extension 227. 
Um, it can range anywhere from helping me with weeding to helping collect registrations to um, helping me manage some of our vessels. Uh, so that's another opportunity. And be on the lookout. We're going to be opening registration for summer programs soon. We have $40,000 in scholarships to offer to local residents. Um, so, you know, stay tuned on our website and it'll be, the word will be getting out soon. Awesome. Well, thank you very, very much for uh, taking the time to sit down with me here tonight. And anything else at all? <laughs> That's it. I just really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with me. And I hope to see all of you out on Onset Bay. Awesome. Well, thank you that <laughs> thank you very much for that, Indiana and Kat. The world of sports is jam-packed with new information this week. And of course, our favorite sportscaster, Laura, is here to share it with you all. Laura, what's new? Thank you so much, Emma. Hi, everyone. This is Laura Clemens, back with your live Wareham Viking News Sports Report. The Wareham High School winter sports seasons are over. Fall 2 sports start March 8, 2021. Athletes must be registered by March 7 to compete on the team of their choosing. Sports being played during the season are boys and girls soccer, field hockey, volleyball, track and field, cheerleading, and football. There is no user fee for sports this year. The Boston Red Sox are playing their first spring training game this weekend. They are facing the Minnesota Twins at 105 on Sunday. Full squad workouts have begun and will continue throughout this week. Red Sox pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez, who was out for the entire 2020 season with myocarditis as a result of COVID-19, is throwing and should be healthy for opening day. It's looking like he'll make the start. There's uncertainty at the New England Patriots quarterback position, though Cam Newton has expressed interest in returning to that position. The Boston Celtics are 15-16 on the season. They lost in overtime this past Sunday to the New Orleans Pelicans, but they won last Friday against the Atlanta Hawks by a final score of 121-109. to they're having a very up and down season and some believe that they are underperforming this year, considering all the talent they have on their team. The Boston Bruins played at Lake Tahoe this weekend where they beat the Philadelphia Flyers by a final score of 7-3. David Pasternak had a hat trick, uh, one of his many throughout his career and I think his second of the season. They lost to the New Jersey Devils this past Thursday. Now back to you, Emma. Great job, Laura, and thank you, everyone. But it is unfortunately time for us to go. To keep up on all current Wareham news throughout the week, visit www.warehamvikingnews.com and like us on Facebook at Wareham Viking News. Make sure to continue to tune in Wednesday evening for a live broadcast at 5 p.m. on Thursday for our rebroadcast at 9 a.m. or on YouTube later tonight right here on WCTV for your best source of news, sports, weather, traffic, and more. Thank you for being with us, and until next time, Wareham, goodbye, stay safe.